Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? And welcome back to the East Yorkshire Wolds yet again. Now it's quite nice today, the sun's out, the sky's blue, but I've got my coat on because it's a little bit chilly, despite the fact the weather looks so nice. I do think though, by the time I finish today, and this is gonna be a long run of villages, this will not be on. I'll be down to my shorts and t-shirt, I think, because it's gonna get warm. So today, we're looking at a long ribbon village just to the northeast of Market Wheaton. This is Goodmanham. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Goodmanham, which was historically known in the year 627 as Godmundingayum, a name meaning the home of the people of Godmund, is where we are today. Keep water in mind for this one. Today's episode starts at one of those water features, Millbeck. Close by is what used to be a paper mill and then a water mill, but was converted to a corn mill in the 1810s. A windmill was incorporated between the water mill and mill house to deal with the unreliable water source. Let's go and explore the village. This is a small one, but very historic. It's situated approximately two miles to the northeast of Market Wheaton, between it and the A614, the main road between Goole and Bridlington. It's also on the Yorkshire Wolds Way National Trail. Goodmanham is a long, thin, elongated ribbon settlement, which at its northern end has most of its amenities, including a church and a pub. Our walk will take us up to that point, scaling a hill, Goodmanham Road, before coming back down later via a major village landmark. So Goodmanham is very much a linear village. It's a ribbon development from north to south. We've started at the south and I've walked up the hill and we've come to the main meat of the village now up this northern end. So I'm gonna walk down there and we're heading for the church, which is the first major landmark. At this point, Google Maps contradicts itself. Street View will tell you you're still on Goodmanham Road, but the map will show you that this is Edwin's Garth. I've labelled it as both. The village is built in a favourable position on a south-facing slope of the Yorkshire Wolds between two streams. It has a copious supply of water from numerous springs in the area. It's always had naturally occurring limestone which has been used for building, and the land is extraordinarily fertile in this region. People have lived here since prehistoric times. The earliest traces of settlement here are from the Stone Age. There are many ancient burial sites and the boundaries of the village lie along the lines of ancient earthworks. There's also evidence it was a prehistoric place of worship. Near the western boundary of the village lies one of the most ancient roads of Britain, later adopted by the Romans. For a small place, you can already see this one's got quite a lot to talk about. The history runs much deeper yet though, a little further up the hill and we've come to the village car park. Free parking here by the way. So this is very similar to Sancton in that Goodmanham has got a free car park for everybody basically. It's really nice that. So if you come here you are not short of a place to park your vehicle. Now this is an interesting little uh, spot here. We've got a, an information board here about Goodmanham. 
most of the stuff that's on there I already knew from my prior research which is a good thing there's some other stuff on there which I didn't know which I'll take some uh, uh, some shots off with my phone camera and we'll put them in this video this is also a nice little area for a good view as well if I come across here you'll see what I mean I've got a little picnic area and if I just stand at the end of this gravel bit you'll see what I mean. Now a bit later on my route goes down there because there's something very important we need to catch before we leave here. Here's a handy map on the information board showing you where Goodmanham is in relation to Market Wheaton. It's literally just to the northeast and easy to walk to from it. A carrier used to operate between the village and both Market Wheaton and Beverley once a week. Other occupations here included a blacksmith who was also the parish clerk in 1823. The Goodmanham Arms pub is next as we turn onto Main Street. This, according to my sources, has a vehicle museum containing Harley Davidson motorcycles and classic cars under restoration. Whether or not it still does, I don't know, but it does seem to have, from this sign, its own microbrewery, named All Hallows Brewery, which is attached to the pub. On the brewery wall is the parish notice board. That's another one down in the East Riding, now to go and take a look at Main Street properly. The most striking property on this street is the old Wesleyan Chapel, which has been converted into a residence. Okay, now we're at the top of the hill and we find the church here. There it is. There is the church. Hopefully it's open. Let's go and have a look. Now we come to the Church of All Hallows. This was built in around 1130 AD on a former pagan site, replacing an earlier one of wooden construction built in the Saxon period. The church was designated a Grade 1 listed building in 1986. Now if you know your pagan history, you might have heard a bit about Coifi, the High Priest. Very little is known about him in truth, but we do know when he converted to Christianity, he would destroy the pagan temple that was here by mounting a stallion and casting a spear into the altar before setting the building on fire. It's often said that he rode from Edwin's Council in York, however local tradition has it that the ride was from the King's Summer Camp at Lonsborough, which is two miles from Goodmanham. The villagers of Goodmanham don't have to deal with anything as barbaric from this site these days. You get a great view over Main Street from the churchyard. William Featherby, a county cricketer for Yorkshire, lived and worked locally to Goodmanham all his life, and he's buried here in this churchyard. Okay, so our route now turns left at the church along the Yorkshire Wolds Way. It's two and a half miles to Lonsborough, but we're not walking all the way to there, obviously. We're just walking around the church this way, down that street you can see there. And then we're going to find a public footpath which will take us towards that landmark I was talking about back at the car park. Speaking of notable people, I have a few Australian followers who might be interested in this man. Richard Foster was associated with the village before he emigrated to South Australia in 1880. He held various posts including Commissioner for Public Works, Minister for Industry and Minister for Works and Railways. He died in 1932. That's one for the genealogists out there. This road doesn't appear to have a name by the way. It runs around the back of the church before rejoining Goodman and Road at its junction with Main Street via a sharp corner. Around that corner is the old red phone box which houses the defibrillator and there's a standalone post box right next to it. Vital villages services all in one place. We're heading onto this footpath next, one of a series of paths which run into the valley below Goodmanham, eventually heading towards Lonsborough. However, we're not going all that way. Instead, when we hit the bottom of the valley, the path will fork and we're off to the left across a field of sheep in search of the lady well. Okay, so here we are on the footpath. Now this is uh, 
definitely off road now uh, this will loop back on itself and we're going to pass something called the lady well now you might remember the market wheaton episode from last week there was a well in that and this is another one of the goodman and wells there are four in total that one was st helens and this one's the lady well let's go and find it the lady well is one of the four springs in the goodmanham area which are supposedly sacred one of these we've already seen that was st helens well in market wheaton its proximity to the church suggests it's had a long history, probably being in use in pagan times, and indeed it was the main water source here until very recently. Unlike St Helen's Well, this is a lot less defined. That well has its own little enclosure and a neat little information board. This one took some finding. No structure is apparent and the spring arises simply under a gnarled old hawthorn in a small dell just beside the footpath between a picnic site and the road below the church. After a little while looking around and dodging the sheep who occupy the same field, I eventually found it. It was well worth the effort though. Have a look. Crystal clear water yet again. Absolutely fantastic. The footpath runs off into the valley, but we're off back the other way into the village. And this will bring us back to Goodman and Road or Edwin's Garth, whichever you prefer. Time to go back down the hill. Here's a few more interesting bits I found out about Goodmanham, which I've not been able to fit elsewhere in this video. For one, Goodmanham has a tumulus, which is a mound of earth and stones raised over a grave or graves. It's located to the southwest of the village, supposedly containing some ruins. Although Goodmanham is very near to York, which was the capital of Viking England, it has no recorded history from that period. The Doomsday Book, though, lists a fair few names of resident farmers. These include Colgrey, Orm, Norman and William de Colville. These names showed a Norman presence. And speaking of names, Goodmanham was sometimes known as Godmundin Graham. Check out these street lamps. These are almost a recurring theme in the East Riding. Once again, we have some unique looking ones. Okay, so when I reach the bottom of the hill, there's something to talk about to do with railway lines. And I think, I'm not totally sure without checking, I made a little tiny mistake in the Market Wheaton episode. I'll do my best to correct it when we get down there. The small mistake I'm referring to comes in the form of Red Lane Bridge, which I said in the picture bit carries the Hudson Way over Red Lane. Red Lane, in fact, goes over the Hudson Way, and the bridge in question is not the one you can see right here. This is very much a different bridge that runs over Goodmanham Road. That's because there are two old railway lines that converge just to the west of Goodmanham's parish boundaries. The junction sits within Market Wheaton. This is a line we've met before. It's the Selby to Driffield line, which is the same one that ran through home on Spalding Moor, Bubworth and Foggathorpe. What you're seeing here is the beginning of the section that connected Market Wheaton to Driffield. The next station along the line to the northeast was Enthorpe. Unlike the Hudson Way, the old line here can only be followed as far north as Watering Dyke Lane. That's the street that we saw down the side of the church. To the south, it joins the Hudson Way at the site of the old Market Wheaton station. Right, picture bit time for Goodmanham. Here it comes right now.
So as you'll see here, Goodmanham starts at this point right here. It's where the village sign is. And the bridge is just in Market Wheaton, as opposed to this village, to this parish. And there you go. That is the parish of Goodmanham and another one down in the East Riding. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this coat is definitely going to have to come off now. I certainly don't recommend trying to walk up the side of the bridge, by the way, like I did to get to the top. Um, it's very steep. It's not very safe. Probably shouldn't have done it if I'm being totally honest. Uh, but uh, it was the easiest thing to do to get up onto the bridge to get a nice shot of it for you. So, uh, yeah, I'm not called the village idiot for nothing. <laughs> Anyway, time for me to move on to my next one, which is not too far away from here, and I'll see you when I get there. This has been the parish of Goodmanham in the East Riding of Yorkshire, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.